Well, the FAA has for decades been one of the most trusted institutions in government, and for good reason. Commercial air travel has been the safest in the world, in part because of the FAA's high standards. But under the Obama administration, that began to change radically without anybody paying attention. The Obama administration pressured the FAA to meet abstract diversity goals. Now, nobody bothered to explain why diversity is a relevant criterion for air traffic controllers. No one will explain it now. We called the FAA today, and we got silence when we asked that question, which is the most basic question. But it didn't matter. Starting in 2014, the FAA added a biographical questionnaire to the application process. Applicants with a lower aptitude in science got preference over applicants who'd scored excellent in science. Applicants who'd been unemployed for the previous three years got more points than licensed pilots got. In other words, the FAA actively searched for unqualified air traffic controllers. That is insane. And they knew it was insane when they did it, but they did it anyway. Today, we obtain new information. It is an internal email written by an executive at the firm that devised the FAA's biographical questionnaire. In that email, the executive admits that the test he devised has nothing to do with finding the best air traffic controllers. If you want good air traffic controllers, find people with experience. That was his advice. The FAA ignored this and used the biographical screen anyway. They didn't care about finding the best air traffic controllers. Compared to diversity, your safety meant nothing to them. We reached out to Greg Martin. He's the FAA's top spokesman. We wanted to know why the FAA would ever use totally irrelevant criteria, such as what people look like, in order to hire for a job as vital as air traffic control. We couldn't get an answer. We also asked the acting FAA administrator, Daniel Ewell, to come on the show and explain what exactly is going on and why he was too cowardly to appear. So was the previous administrator, Michael Huerta. He's the one who originally signed off on the policy. He's also a coward. But we're going to keep pushing until we get an answer. In the meantime, we're joined by former air traffic controller Michael Pearson. He's also a lawyer and is suing the FAA over all of this. Michael, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me on, Tucker. So I want to be certain I didn't misstate that. The biographical screen, which was devised under the Obama administration for the reasons I just explained, was created by a company that admitted that it was not the right way to find the most talented air traffic controllers, but the FAA kept it in anyway. Is that correct? Oh, that's correct. Actually, you didn't misstate it. You understated what occurred. Uh, to put this story in a nutshell, in 2000, uh, late 2011, early 2012, uh, members of the National Black uh, Controllers Association uh, had a meeting um, with uh, the Rainbow Push Coalition, Jesse Jackson, and some high-level DOT and FAA officials. Michael Huerta was part of those meetings, uh, by the way. And right after that meeting, the FAA put an immediate hold on hiring. They stopped hiring. Uh, they've used excuses like sequester, but that's not really what happened. Basically, they shut down the process, even though the nation needed air traffic controllers. Lots were retiring. The system was, uh, was needing new trainees to go through the, the system because it takes a period of time to get through, but they did that consciously. Then, the purge of the 2,600 or more uh, qualified CTI students and graduate of programs across this country, including traditionally black colleges and disadvantaged colleges, um, were wiped off a list. And by the way, that list, uh, the 2,600 folks, included a large percentage of female and minority applicants who would have been fantastic air traffic controllers. And so these are people who'd been, who were going to school for it, basically. Going to school for it, had prior military experience in the area, were pilots. Some of these individuals were, were more qualified, certainly, than, than I was uh, when I started. Then after that, they designed a test you're speaking about, a biographical assessment, biographical questionnaire. It's, it's varied in terms, but this first one was called a biographical assessment that was made for a different purpose, as you stated. It wasn't uh, supposed to be used the way it was, and actually the creator actually notified the FAA of that. And they used it anyway. In effect, that test punished people with any aviation knowledge, any air traffic control experience, any aviation experience, any science experience. And then the FAA came out and they actually had uh, one individual, uh, public relations uh, of the Southwest region, published that it was for diversity and that was pulled back immediately and then they stated it was for the best and brightest candidates. Since this is so rotten and corrupt, I don't think anybody wants to live in a country where you can't trust air traffic control because they're so dogmatically ideological that they're intentionally seeking the worst candidates. It's insane. 
very quickly, well, what about all the unions and all the pilots groups, private commercial pilots groups? What about all the people in aviation world who knew this was going on? Why did nobody say anything about it? Well, I think certain groups did try to say something, but quite frankly, uh, there wasn't enough press coverage on it. And because of other political reasons, it didn't come to the forefront. The bigger question is after those students were purged, then the FAA literally knew that there were individuals engaged in cheating to pass the new biographical assessment. So they wiped the students off the list. They yep. allowed a group to then engage in intentional cheating, gave basically the subgroup, the National Black Coalition of Federal um, or of Aviation Employees, the answers to that test. And uh, that's as big of a story as anything else. What, what a, happened? And, and we're, unfortunately, we're out of time, but this will not be the last time we address this. This is a threat to the country. It's totally it wrong, and it can only happen in secrecy, and we plan to pierce that. So thank you, Michael, for all your help with this, and I know that we'll talk to you again. Thank you. It goes deep and broad. Thank you very much. Thank you.